All right, so one of the hardest things that you're probably realizing to do in Revit is putting the kitchen together. Um, you know, aligning your cabinets is one thing, but the countertops is a whole nother, uh, <laughs> not so fun process. Uh, I will admit that. Um, I did share with you a link to another tutorial that someone did to make your own custom countertops, which is a great idea. Um, but you can do countertops in Revit City and or in Revit without making custom ones or sometimes using a combination of the two. And I just kind of wanted to touch on this because of how difficult this can be. I wanted to show you how you can customize countertops within Revit. Um, again, you can do a combination of things, but be sure to watch that other video. So you can put a straight run and then you can do a corner or you can do a straight run and um, customize the rest, you know, so you do have options there. The problem is customizing these particular countertops that are in Revit. So I just, that's what I wanted to show you in case you were going to use one of them. It is possible, um, but customizing them sometimes is a little bit tricky. So I'm not sure if you realize this. I apologize for not saying this earlier, but before you drop a component down, no matter what it is, cabinet, oven, if you hit the space bar, you can rotate it to uh, meet your needs. So <clears throat> if I put this down here, I'm just going to drop it here for now for the sake of time and show you that if I double click on this counter, and please know that the hole for your sink needs to land evenly over a cabinet you can't have the whole of a sink you know hitting like the the the, the edges of a cabinet so you have to plan accordingly for that but if i double click on this countertop and i click on it it brings up all these little um arrows that i can i can tweak the size of this thing so if i if i click on that it's going to bring up this menu and say, remove constraints. Yes, yeah, say that. That's good. That's, that's kind of the first step. And then click it again, and it will let you change the length. And you kind of have to repeat that process. Now I got to remove constraints for this. And then I got to make my backsplash line up. And then if I want to do these, same thing. Oh, this time it's not going to throw that code. Okay. Usually you have to keep hitting remove constraint. But if you want to move your the hole for your sink, you can do that. So you can change these things. Then you can hit load into project. Overwrite the, overwrite the existing version. And you can see that this length changed. Now it doesn't look like my the hole for the sink moved. And that is the problem that we face. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, generally that will work. And then in other cases like mine, um, it does not reflect the change. And I don't know why, because I've done it on students' computers and it works just fine. And then other times it does not. So um, that's the beauty of Revit sometimes. I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason for some things that it does or does not do. But uh, hopefully that works for you and it doesn't give you a problem like mine is. If so, call me over. I'll try and work through it with you. Um, you know, because these are these these changes I'm making to the lengths here are that's working. Um, so again, you can piece together your cabinet or your, your countertop. You know, you can do a short run. And then you can put this in the corner, uh, you know, however you have to piece it together or use this with a, a custom countertop that you make, you know, but, um, 
you should be able to make those changes to any countertop you bring in. Let's for the heck of it try another one. Uh, let's see. If you bring one in with a sink, that tends to create bigger problems. Uh, you may want to avoid the one with the sink in it already and just put the sink in later as a separate component. Let's try this. See now this is going to say remove constraints. Let's see if that made a change. Okay, so that worked. So I'm uh, not crazy. I don't know why it didn't work on the last countertop, but um, that is a nice way to just, you know, not have to do extra work. If it works, it's a nice quick way to, to modify your cabinets or your countertops. When it doesn't work, then, you know, you feel like pulling your hair out and I get it. But uh, hopefully that can be a really easy way for you to avoid maybe some some struggles you're having or if, if, if the custom countertops aren't working for you, you know, whatever. But you can try that and it can be an easy way to, to make some quick modifications to your countertops. Remember, you can change the materials for your countertops, as I explained in the materials video. If you watch that yet, you can change this to be a different material. Watch that video. Um, I didn't mention in that other video, but... You can also uh, change your tiles to different size tiles if you want them to be bigger. Usually the smaller tiles are in smaller rooms. Big rooms like kitchens have larger tile. And also please note that you always have overhang. So your cabinets always overhang the front and the sides of, of the open sides of, of, uh, of your cabinets. So countertops always overhang a little bit by an inch or so. Keep that in mind when you're making your cabinets 